Hi everybody, Krista Cowan here with another episode of the Barefoot Genealogist. For those of you who are watching this live, I apologize for the late start. I had a little bit of technical difficulty today. Hopefully things are running well and you can hear and see me clearly. Today we're going to be talking about Native American ancestry and I can tell from the couple hundred of you that are still watching this live even after the delay that it is something that really interests a lot of you. Native American ancestry is something that captures our imagination and um, that a lot of us feel really connected to as far as the family stories that have been handed down. Today we're specifically going to talk about the Dawes roles and we'll explain, I'll explain a little bit later what those are in particular. So if you're looking for information about just general Native American research, I'm going to actually direct you to a, a previous broadcast that I did. I would recommend that you watch that and then use this, in con this information today in conjunction with that in order to prove out your Native American family stories. With that introduction, let's dive in. So a couple of things you just need to be aware of um, as far as general Native American family history research goes. The first is that I would recommend that you watch that previous broadcast. It can be found on our YouTube channel or you can use this quick link which is Ancestry without the E, A-N-C-S-T-R-Y dot me slash Native American. That'll take you directly to that previous broadcast that just gives some general Native American um, family history research tips and tricks. Uh, I say this a little bit tongue in cheek, but, but really um, I come across this quite often. There is no such thing as a Cherokee princess. And so um, as you get engaged in Native American family history research, if you'll eliminate that phrase from your vocabulary, people uh, will tend to take you a little bit more seriously as you're doing your research. You also need to recognize that there are over 500 federally recognized tribes in the United States. So not everyone is Cherokee um, by any stretch of the imagination. And you could have multiple um, Native American ancestors uh, in your family tree as you start climbing up those various branches that could have come from various tribes. You also need to be aware that many of our ancestors, our Native American ancestors, hid their ethnicity for various reasons at various points in, in time in history. And re recognize that there may be, not be any records that actually state their ethnicity. They may have listed themselves as white on census records. They may have lived as white men their whole lives. And you may run into some brick walls as you try to trace back their ancestors um, because of that choice that they made. So just recognize that there will be some frustrations along the way and that there could be some brick walls along the way. But there are some ways around those things and, and some of the things I'll share with you today will help you with that. One thing that can help you with that has to do with DNA. DNA can confirm that you have Native American blood. And so don't hesitate to take a DNA test. We have um, Lots of people who have shown up with Native American or North American Native um, blood or DNA um, in ethnicity DNA. However, be aware that just because it doesn't show up in your DNA does not mean that you don't have Native American ancestry. It just means that either you don't carry um, enough of their DNA to make a connection with that ethnicity or that we um, haven't, haven't got enough of a reference sample for that particular kind of DNA that you have. So DNA can confirm that you have Native American blood, but if you don't show up with Native American DNA, it does not mean that you are not Native American or that you do not have Native American ancestry. Okay, um, a couple of other things. There are other records available on Ancestry.com for Native American research. You can use the card catalog and use the keywords Indian and Native American to pull up all of those databases. Just take a look at what we have. It's kind of interesting to see what's available. You're going to find the card catalog by hovering over search and clicking on card catalog, which is the bottom option there. Here is that keyword field, and if I type in Indian and click search, you'll see we have 161 databases that contain um, the word Indian somewhere in the title or in the database description. 
Now, not all of these have to do with Native Americans. Of course, this first one does, and it's probably going to be of the most interest to the most number of you. It is the U.S. Indian Census Rolls from 1885 to 1940. I always recommend that you scroll down past that search box and read the database description. From there, you'll discover that these records were obtained by us, Ancestry.com, from the National Archives, and they were originally records from the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Um, again, this, sense, or this database description will tell you what was recorded in the census and information about it. Keep in mind, however, this census is not for every reservation or every group of Indians for every year. Only people who maintained a formal affiliation with a tribe under, under federal supervision are listed in the census rolls. So if your ancestor chose to remove themselves from the tribe or um, was not living on tribal land, they likely will not be included in these particular census records. However, if they did maintain that tribal identity and were still living on tribal land or under federal supervision, then they will be included in these census rolls. Go ahead and scroll through these. Some of these you'll see have to do with the Indian Wars, and so they're not specific to Indian. That's one of the downsides of using this keyword field is you get a little bit more than you expected. But 161 databases, you can certainly scroll through and see that there are um, a lot of little databases that might not um, come up ever in the top of your search results, and so you might not ever get to them. So you, it's worth looking through here. You can see things about, um, there's one, a database here about Osage Indians. There's a database here about the Indians of, of Eastern Kentucky. There's, there's databases about Choctaw and Paiute and just it's very small databases about very specific groups of people. And so if you just scroll through this list of databases that comes up when you use that keyword, you might find a history of um, the time or the place or even the people that your Native American ancestors um, affiliated with. So even if they're not listed in the specific records of the Walker River Valley Nevada Paiute Indians, <laughs> um, you might learn something about the culture and about the people and about how the records were kept that would lead you to actual records about your ancestor. So it's certainly worth taking a look. Um, many of these are books that you can read or browse just like you would um, an electronic book. Some of them are just databases. Again, always read that database description to discover more about that particular set of records. Now, the other keyword that you can use here is Native American. And that will actually, let me reset filters here and then try that, Native American. And that will actually bring up a much smaller set of records, including the enrollment cards, which is what we're going to talk about or what we are talking about um, today. So let's talk about those enrollment cards for just a minute. First of all, they're called the Dawes Rolls most frequently, and that's because that's the congressman who um, was responsible for seeing that this occurred. The official name of these are the Native American Enrollment for the five civilized tribes. The five civilized tribes, as they were called, are Cherokee, Choctaw, Creek, Chickasaw, and Seminole. So if you have ancestors that you suspect might be from one of those five civilized tribes, the Dawes Rolls are the go-to place to determine uh, their enrollment, their tribal enrollment. A few things you need to know about the Dawes Rolls. Um, first of all, citizens were enrolled in several different categories. Uh, they could be a citizen by blood, which meant they were a child of or born into uh, a family where the parents were already citizens. They could be citizens by marriage, and this is um, dispels a little bit of a myth that sometimes creeps in that if an Indian married a white, they were excluded from the tribe, when in fact... It's, it was often the other way around. If a white married an Indian, they were included in the tribe, most importantly because then their children became citizens by blood. So citizens by blood and citizens by marriage are going to be two of the more, most frequent designations that you're going to see. Then there were also freedmen, which were former black slaves of Indians who were granted tribal enrollment. And then a small section of these um, citizens were were Delaware Indians who were adopted into the Cherokee tribe, and so there are records for them. Now, these records, um, they were originally, they ran from 1898 
1914. 1914 was when the Dawes rolls were officially closed. No new enrollments were allowed after 1914. The majority of the enrollments are going to occur before 1906. Between 1906 and 1914, there were only about oh, 300 or so people that were actually um, added to the roll. From 1898 to 1906, there were over 250,000 people that applied or had applications filled out for them to be put on the Dawes Rolls. Um, this was really important at the time because it gave them um, some, it gave them a land allotment and it gave them a financial allotment, uh, and that was that was important. Um, and so there were some people who applied who who were not qualified, and so they were rejected. So out of the 200 and more than 250,000 people that applied, there were only about 100,000, actually it's 101,000 and, and change, 100, over um, 100,000 that were actually enrolled. Now, you may be wondering why this is important. Now, for family history purposes, of course, we just are excited to find someone, but there is an actual um, still recognized federal purpose for the Dawes Rolls. Um, in many tribes today, you have to prove descent from an individual on the Dawes Rolls as a requirement for tribal membership. And it has to be a, it has to be the person on the Dawes Rolls. But here's what I mean by that. If I can prove that my great, great, great grandfather is on, um, was Native American because his brother is on the Dawes Rolls, for family history purposes, that's great, right? But if I want tribal membership, that does not count because my ancestor, my great-great-great-grandfather, is not listed on the Dawes Rolls. Only his brother is. And that causes a lot of confusion for some people and some frustration. Um, that is the requirement. So it doesn't matter if you can prove that they are part of the same family. The person you descend from has to be on the roll. Also, the Dawes Rolls are still used today by the federal government to determine status for the Certificate of Degree of Indian Blood. And that certificate um, from the Bureau of Indian Affairs is actually used for um, benefits and for educational purposes and grants and all of that. So um, the Dawes Rolls serve a very active, very real purpose today, but they can still serve a huge purpose for us uh, family history-wise if we're not interested in tribal membership or in obtaining that certificate. Now, before we actually jump into the Dawes Rolls themselves and take a look at them and how to search them, if you want to learn more about researching Native American ancestry in general, the National Archives has an excellent resource for you. You can find it at archives.gov forward slash research forward slash native dash Americans. And that's a dash, not an underscore or a space, native dash Americans. If you visit that website, they have lots of really terrific resources and guides, as well as links to some data that they have available on their website and information cataloged about what re resources they have available in the archives that you can view if you visit um, a regional archives, a regional center of the National Archives. So. Let's take a look specifically at these Dawes Rolls. They're, they're going to be found when you do this keyword search for Native American. It's going to be this very first database that comes up. It's the U.S. Native American enrollment cards for the five civilized tribes from 1898 to 1914. As always, scroll down past that search box, read the database, the source information in the database description. The database description gives you an idea of what and why it was created. In this case, it also includes information about what you're going to see in the database. So here's that categorization that I just shared with you. It's also going to show you what information is going to be included on the role itself and then um, how you search them or what you do. So here's, here's kind of the summary of how this works. In this collection, we have the actual enrollment cards and then the index that was created to the enrollment cards. So if I'm searching for a family member, what it's searching is the index. So it helps to know um, if you have a general idea of when your ancestor was born and you have a general idea of what tribal affiliation, um, what their tribal affiliation is, it'll help you narrow down your search results. 
so that you know you have the right person, whether you have the right person or not. What you're searching is actually the index. So here's what the index looks like. It's a typed index that was created. And let me just zoom in on this so you can see it a little bit better. It's a typed index that was created. And here's what it shows you. It shows you the, their enrollment number. Each um, Indian was given an enrollment number. Their name, their age, their gender, what's called their blood. So you can see here lots of different designations in this category. In this case, Rebecca Nelson is one half. Um, Rufus Satterfield is one eighth. Um, Samson Wade is a full. You'll see it comes down here, Claude McCoy is seven sixteenths. I think one sixteenth um, is generally the minimum amount that you can have blood that you can have of Indian blood you can have and still be enrolled. So you'll see here, Benjamin Brinkley is one sixteenth, um, and I personally at least haven't seen anything less than that. So you will have multiple sixteenths and varying degrees up from there. So um, that's a good clue. Family history-wise, that's a really good clue for you. If you see somebody is full, then you know that both of their parents were Native American. If somebody's three quarters, you know one of their grandparents was not. So it gives you an, an, a place to start or some basic information for your family history. Then the most important piece of information on this image for your research purposes is this census card number. So there was actually a census taken, and this number will refer you to the original image of that census. This is just an index page, so it does give you some information, but there's a lot more information to be had. So you want to you want to note down the census card number. Then, once you have that piece of information, you're going to come back here to this main database page and you're going to browse to the card number. So we, we indexed the index because it was typewritten and easy and, and effective to do. And then you get that card number and you can come over here and browse to that card number. So it's done by tribal affiliation and then the card numbers are listed here. And so I would click on the range here that contains the card number I'm interested in. Let me show you this image here. This is just microfilm leaders here that we got from the National Archives. Then that card number is going to be in the top right hand corner. And if I was looking for, you know, 44 something, I would jump ahead, you know, maybe 400 images. And here's 4424. You start to get an idea for how that works. So you browse to the card number and then you get some really great information. So let's zoom in just a little bit here and we can see. So first of all, there is much like a census location information up here about where they are living. Then they have their enrollment number, their roll number, and then the names of the members of the household. Much like a census, the first person is usually the head of household and then the relationships to that person are listed below that. Next column is the age. Then we have the gender, and then we have their blood. You'll see here a quarter, an eighth, an eighth, okay? Then the next section is about previous tribal enrollment. So this, in this case, um, Daniel and his wife Martha. Daniel was enrolled in 1896. Martha was enrolled in 1880. And then it lists the district that they were enrolled in and what that enrollment number was. So it just leads you back to another set of records. This next section, and this is genealogy gold, has to do with the tribal enrollment of the parents. So here, um, let's see here, it lists Daniel House. So here Daniel's father, Nathan, is listed. And then if, if they know when, it would list the year of his enrollment and where. Then his mother, Nancy J. House, it would also list her year and number if they knew it. This then is Martha's parents, so now we have Martha's maiden name. <laughs> um, her, her father is listed here. It looks like her mother's name is not listed, so she might not have known it, or whoever provided the information might not have known it, but it is known that her mother is, at this time, deceased. So there's a clue, a piece of information that might help. 
and then of course the district as well. And then the children, of course, their parents are listed as number one and number two, which would be of course person number one and person number two on this specific form. So here, in one, on one sheet of, of paper, you have one, two, three generations of family listed with fathers for both the, the head of household and his wife and a mother listed for the head of household. There are also some stamps and some notations on most of these records. Pay attention to those. Um, things like this um, application was was refused at one point and then it looks like it may have been accepted later. There's additional information here about previous enrollment in this case. This says that there were affidavits that were filed for this couple and then it lists the filing date of that affidavit. That might be something that you can obtain from the National Archives that might have more information about, about not just about this couple but about their um, their tribal affiliation, their, um, their parents, their marriage, their birth, any other information that might be included in those affidavits. So don't just pull the information here about their age and their, their degree of native blood, but be sure to look at the entire image to get a full idea of exactly what happened with their enrollment. There are times when enrollment is rejected, there are times when it wasn't, it wasn't approved, and there are times when they were later, um, on occasion, removed from the rolls because additional information came to light. Now, that certainly affects you if you're interested in this for tribal enrollment or federal benefit purposes, but if you're interested in this for family history purposes only, um, it, it, it's just more clues to provide you with more information to trace those ancestors. Hopefully that makes sense to all of you. Again, as I mentioned, you can go to the National Archives website to learn more about Native American research and of course visit our YouTube channel to watch the previous broadcast that I did about just general Native American research. But if you suspect that your ancestor was one of the 101,000 people that were enrolled um, as part of the five civilized tribes uh, at the, in the early 1900s, this is the go-to record collection to search for them and information about their ancestry. If you have any questions about this, I will be available live on chat as immediately following this presentation. If you are watching an archived version of this on YouTube, you can leave a comment and I do monitor those comments and answer as necessary. If you have suggestions for future topics you'd like to see addressed in our broadcasts, you can email me at ask at ancestry.com. I will be putting together the December calendar here in a week or so, so I am looking for what you want to hear and learn more about. You can check our Facebook page, click on that events tab to see topics, dates, and times for future live stream presentations. Until next time, this is Krista Cowan. Have fun climbing your family tree.